How satisfied you are with Reebok's progress in the first half of the year? So let me first put you know, our old figures or the company figures into perspective. We grew almost 20%. We doubled the, you know, the income forecast growth for the year. We grew in the US with Adidas more than 30%, China, as you said, almost 30 and, and e-com 60. So we're very, very happy. We're also happy with the progress, are satisfied with the progress we're doing with Reebok, which is 10% of our business. But overall, you know, we're very happy and satisfied with the progress we're making as a company in a market which is not so easy anymore. Yeah, there is more and more price competitive out there. But given the strong cash generation and also recent disposal, um, Casper, can you actually add anything to your portfolio? And if yes, what kind of things would you like to add? As you indicated, we sold our tailmate business and our CCM business out of Canada in the past quarter, and we're not looking for any inorganic investments. We have so much opportunity with our Adidas brand and our Reebok brand that we need to continue to invest in these brands who drive you know, above market growth. And I, and I hope you saw yesterday we announced the extension of the MLS contract in the U.S., which shows our willingness to aggressively invest into the market to build a much larger position particularly the U.S. market than we've had in the past. The U.S. market numbers are absolutely extraordinary. Kasper, one of the things that I think is so important is psychologically a fashion-forward company dealing with the idea that someday it will end. What are you doing at the board level and at the senior management level to structure Adidas where the in this ends, the vogue ends, where every mom has to have three kids only dressed in Adidas? Someday that will end. How do you structure for that? I don't know whether someday that will end. I think the way we need to structure is to get a very strong position in U.S. sports, football, basketball, hockey, soccer, and that's what we're working very diligently on. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, also having the at least your part as being active part of our portfolio. But I believe that we still have a very, very long runway in the yeah. U.S. We are by no means where we need to be, despite very strong growth rates. I'd, I'd like to mention also that Adidas didn't you know, ruin the but, but Montreal Canadiens jerseys. They look great here as you bring out your NHL jerseys yeah. this year. Let me bring in one of the best investors in New York and in America uh, right now, Casper. Char uh, Charles Cantor joins from Newburger Berman with a question for Mr. Warstead. Good, good afternoon. How, how do you think about the role of companies like Amazon um, um, as it relates to your product segmentation, you know, differences between using those platforms versus engaging with a company direct, with customers directly? So clearly, we've, we've been very clear and said we're going to build an online business that will be $4 billion by 2020, and we're growing 60% right now. But it's not going to be an either or. We're very happy with the relationships we have with the more traditional the partners of ours, the footloggers, the Dick Sporting Goods. But in America, we also have a relationship with Amazon. You've got to be where the consumer is, but you can't be, rely too much on one entity. So it's got to be a mixture. But the core of it is you've got to be where the consumer is. And right now, the consumer is coming to us in the U.S. with growth online. With our online growth in the U.S. is almost 80%, so even above the 60 So we are seeing the consumer is coming to adidas.com. Um, Casper, do you think it's a game changer that actually you're having a, a really strong year, but it's a year where there are no Olympics, there are no World Cups, so does it mean actually that your marketing or what you're focusing on is away from the mega sporting events onto something, I guess, that's more sustainable, that's more balanced? It's clear that normally a non-event year is a more difficult year, but this is really where you build the foundation for what you're doing. And if you look upon the extension of the MLS contract, it really gives us the opportunity to work with youth teams in the U.S. to use our products to gain early on the experience with Adidas. So we see this as an opportunity for building a long-term sustainable you know, position in the U.S. And the growth rates we're seeing in the first half in the U.S., we expect the same growth rates in the second half. We continue to see very, very strong demand for our products in the North American marketplace. And in China, by the and way, which we haven't spoken about. Yeah, and China, actually, we've been all through the numbers today. China was a pretty good quarter for you as well. But how sustainable are the price increases, giving the, the increased competition also from your rivals? I think that you need to have build a strong brand and very desirable products. And uh, the reason why we've also been able to uh, uptake the profitability in the second quarter and also the outlook for the year is that the consumers are willing to more and more you know, buy our products at full price, and that's what you're seeing. So right. uh, there will always be competition. 
you know, I don't think that that is not a, that is not right now our core issue on the pricing competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, pricing right now we're not you know we're not we're going to try to avoid too much promotion.